But I feel like sometimes I'm also a puppy. I feel like whenever my fiance come back home, I just shake my tail, you know, like crazy, <laughs> like just really excited. <laughs> My name is Janine Itzan. I'm an Israeli artist based in New York, known mainly for my uh, human animal creatures that I put both on human skin and paper. I'm crafting and drawing since I can remember. Yeah, I just found um, childhood videos of me drawing on the floor, you know. I work mainly with uh, pen on paper. I started with um, pencil, but I'm too messy, so I dropped and w went to work with a pen. I feel it's kind of amazing that you cannot back down, like you cannot regret what you did or erase it. In high school, I was uh, drawing mainly my friends and then animals because it was easy. So I was doing both, but separately. Then I showed a great aunt of mine. Her name is Galia. She is an amazing artist and I showed her my, my work and she's, she's, she wanted to compliment, compliment me, but she was saying, um, oh, you, you copy great, you copy well. Like, you're a good robot. And I got extremely offended. And I was depressed for a few months. And then my friend um, told me to watch a YouTube called Everything is a Remix on YouTube, which is a simple YouTube video for 40 minutes, show that everything in history of art and technology and movies and everything uh, was a combination of two things that were exist before. So I watched this movie and really in a rational way I was thinking how would I make a real art so I will copy, change and combine the human and the animals that I already do and then I got addicted and I couldn't stop ever since. In Israel it's mandatory to uh, serve in the military um, so therefore I was doing that for two years and when I was bored uh, while guarding all the time I was just drawing on my hand and that became viral on Facebook and people start asking for tattoo appointments and so I had to learn how to do that. The biggest influence on me is childhood in general. I like children books and vintage photos of kids and even children drawing something so rough when children are drawing. So I feel like my whole life I'm all about childhood. And I don't know, I'm the biggest fan of Winnie the Pooh, you know, till that day. So that's, I feel like I live, uh, live that way. And I feel like we should learn more than kids, more from kids. We should learn more from kids. I'm ashamed not to be part of the tattooing scene because I'm not. I don't know enough tattoo artists. I don't know enough the tradition. I'm not part of the community. I'm, I'm not. Because I'm also not quite in the community of the fine art scene which is also a scene that I want to be part of. So I feel like I'm between the both worlds all the time. And as anything, there are always a pros and cons. I feel I get respect. Art teachers or painters, I feel a lot of respect that they say, you do something that is permanent on people's skin and you cannot erase that. And they're amazed by that. And then sometimes when I'm tattooing, I will take one step back and I will just you know, work like I'm working on a canvas and uh, looking for the bigger picture like you would do in oil paint. Today, I'm gonna tattoo a couple and I want a prince and a princess. Once I'm meeting them, we're gonna have the process together and then we're gonna choose a prince and a princess that will work together with a lion head for the prince and a lioness for the princess. As an artist, I couldn't be just an artist that sit at home and, and, and paint alone all the time. Therefore, that was one of the reasons that I became a tattoo artist, because I really wanted to meet people. That's my favorite part in, in the tattooing process. Create a collaboration with the client. So I always feel like it's not my work, it's, it's a collaboration. I feel like I'm working with pen, so I'm, I'm trying to work with, with liners mostly. It's really rare, rare that I work with a round shader or, or a magnum. Usually it will be a liner. I will have probably a three or a five just in case when I need the details, but mainly the nine. I will use the liner nine in most parts, most tattoos. Yeah, liner nine, practically big pen in my feeling. I don't know. <laughs> the reason I'm working with only black 
grayscale ink is um, is the same reason why I work only with pen. So I feel like I don't need big tools to do something. I want to go simple. And I know myself as a messy person that tend to lose stuff and to, to I don't know, to just be messy. I want to have as little as possible to do as much as possible. There is two, two ways that I'm uh, usually working. I, I don't know when I would choose either, either of them, but it's either I'm uh, doing a almost blood lines, really bright lines for the whole thing and then coming back. That way I can warm up my way to the head and doing most um, when I'm picked in my energy part, like it's going to be on the head part and then I'm coming back. But I know it's more painful that way when I op open the skin already and then going back. So sometimes I feel sorry for the people. I don't want to hurt them. I know I'm in the wrong profession if I don't want to hurt people, but I, I really don't. <laughs> so sometimes I will just do like a printer, you know, just working from down, down my way up. If I will uh, tattoo a, a face, a human face, it's, it's someone. It's a real someone. And, and I was more interested in doing not about the someone and about just about the idea. Um, and I think that animal represents a lot. Um, but also I never wanted tattooing to be my main job, like my daily, everyday job, because I feel like for me, scarring someone for life uh, could never be taken for granted. People come, it's, it's their holiday to come to get a new tattoo, it, even though it's something like, even when it's something really small and not as important to us, the tattoo artists, but for them, it's just like, you know, it's an amazing day. And that's what one of my favorite things in this job to, to find happy people every time. Uh, but I want to be as excited as them. So I don't want it to do every day. So it wouldn't be uh, exhausting. Design for myself, it's the hardest thing because I feel like when you have too many options, it's like you have no options at all. You know, it's, it's as complicated to have all the options in the world as uh, not have any option at all. In this uh, exhibition, it was kind of nice because I had the idea first of wishing my human animals to be extremely big in New York. I feel like once I have an idea and a frame of what should I do, it's easier uh, to build something inside of it. It's always about the, um, me being a tall girl. It's always a thing to try to fit in because I was always making myself smaller. And also I feel like that's, that's kind of a special perspective to when they move to a new city and then they look kind of from the outside. When they just arrive a city, you just kind of watch it, observe it. And I feel like they were doing that when they were so big. The thing about New York is that every day I'm amazed uh, by the city and the the drawing just just make it be, made it um, made it more extreme you have no idea how many pictures i have just from crossing an avenue and taking a picture of the avenue because i'm just i don't know what to do with all this beauty and i'm just taking a picture i'm from the north of israel from uh, i grew up in you know nature vibe um, and then when i moved to tel aviv i was amazed from tel aviv and then I moved to Berlin and I was amazed from Berlin. And then I moved to New York and I'm now amazed from New York. So my friends will, will make fun of me that I'm always amazed, you know, like a child. But I feel like now New York is really is the most amazing thing. Probably going back to Berlin, I wouldn't be amazed anymore, you know? So uh, I, I, I dare the world to make me more amazed from uh, any other city, but I'm, I'm not sure it's gonna happen anymore.